have packed this car full of explosives. My name's Paul King, and today I'm playing a suicide bomber. Okay, I'm approaching the target now, which is a big black Jeep. And I'm just coming up and I'm losing power. The lights have gone off and the car is dead. And here is the guy who can tell us exactly what's just happened. Dr. Ernst Krogegar heads up an international team developing a new device which stops suspected suicide bombers vehicles. The team is now testing this new technology at a secret location in Norway. The NATO-funded project has developed a high-intensity electromagnetic beam which makes engines cut out. The ignition uh, will generate a very high-intensity pulse and it will interfere with the electronic control system uh, inside the car, so the car engine will stop. This first test simulated a suicide bomber driving up to a checkpoint. But would the device work against the suicide bomber targeting a moving car? Myself and the project's senior scientist, Harry Arneson, set off to find out. OK, Harry, so I'm behind the target now, pulling up behind as close as I can, and as soon as it's possible, I'm going to pull out and try and overtake. What's going to happen is that when we get really close to it, they will fire the, uh, the engine stopper and the electromagnetic noise from the radiator will actually interfere with our engine and stop it. OK, and that's exactly what's happened. Yes. So, Harry, the system clearly works and it's come from this car here. What's the main advantage of using this sort of technique? Well, it's a fairly safe and simple way of doing it. And it's also non-lethal. It doesn't actually kill anyone, it doesn't harm anyone, and it doesn't really harm the vehicle much either. The next question is, can the device defend against attacks on water? In the year 2000, terrorists launched a suicide attack against the USS Cole, ramming it with a boat packed full of explosives. 17 US personnel were killed. In this test, the device is mounted on the back of a vehicle facing a lake as a jet ski prepares to launch a simulated suicide attack. So, Justine, how does this work then? Well, try a push that button. This one here, okay. Yeah, go ahead. There you go. This device is not just for use in high risk countries. At 3.25 on the afternoon of the 22nd of July 2011, Oslo was hit by an enormous car bomb. It had been planted by Anders Bering Breivik outside the Prime Minister's office. And Norwegians clearly still remember that day well. We thought it was a gas explosion of some kind. Uh, I fell over, so I thought maybe it felt like an earthquake. I come home and I turn on the TV and I sat there for the rest of the day and the next, next day. I think we were uh, really taken by surprise that something like that could happen. So we were in shock, I think, yes. This is the road that Anders Bering Breivik took as he walked away from a car bomb which he planted just outside the Prime Minister's office behind me there, the effects of which can still be seen. Eight people were killed instantly, 209 injured. The worst atrocity on Norwegian soil since the Second World War. And Norway has not suffered alone. In Madrid, Spain, in 2004, 191 commuters were killed by bombs set off by mobile phones. This new technology that's being tested could jam similar bombs, and not just conventional ones. This is an uh, example for a chemical or a biological uh, bomb. 
uh, you can pollute uh, drinking water, for example, remote control. Okay, you have the equipment in your hand. Could you yes. just show us how you would activate this? Yeah. So you've just got a couple of controls on the remote. And that could be chemical weapon, biological weapon. Yes. And all done from yeah. some distance. Chemical, biological, radiological or nuclear. We, we can kill it. In NATO science and technology organization, nations can share their knowledge, their experts and their means the uniqueness of this event is that it brings together in one trial all possible applications of this technology. Finally, the team tests to see if the device can defend against bombs mounted on drones. With the drone's electronics successfully jammed, the team now know that any terrorist planning this kind of attack will face a new kind of obstacle.